Hi everyone, this is Sarah, the Catholic Homemaker. Today I wanted to do another book review and this one is called Sidetracked Home Executives and it is by Pam Young and Peggy Jones, another interlibrary loan book that I got. And it's from Pigpen to Paradise. So first of all, before I get into my book review, I wanna say welcome to anyone who is new to my channel and welcome back to anyone who is back and please consider subscribing to my channel so we can continue to grow this community. Also hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and share this video. Also hit the notification bell for all notifications so you know when I post, which is every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And I would love for you to comment below as well to let me know what you think if you've read this book as well. So this was another book recommended to me by my friend Laura from What Laura Likes. And it's a really great book about organization and just homemaking in general to just kind of get your systems in place, especially for people who are having trouble with that. And it was a very easy read and it's only like a hundred, um, Hang on, let me see, 120 or 30, 134 pages. And then there's an appendix in the back with a bunch of charts that you can reference or use yourself. Now this is a library book, so I won't be writing in it, but I will say overall, I liked the principles of this book. However, because I am a stay-at-home mom full-time, um, yes, I'm a full-time homemaker, but I'm also a full-time stay-at-home mom, and I don't send my kids to school or daycare. That kind of complicates things. And I think based on the system that they have, there are certain days a week where you are dedicating a few to several hours of cleaning. And that is just not a possibility in my life at this moment. No matter how many systems I set up, I try to do my best to keep up with the basics every single week with cleaning, cooking for my family, um, just being an overall good mom and educating my children and reading them stories, playing with them, um, doing activities with them, having them go outside. And so I will say, like based on what their recommendations are, that is not where I am at. However, maybe some of you watching are at that place and maybe you do send your kids to school or um, maybe you do have several hours that you can dedicate to this. So maybe that would work for you. So what their system is, is they have these index cards that you write. Um, there's all these different notes that you write, but it would be let's say the kitchen, for instance, you would categorize all these different note cards based on what needs to be done, whether it's like making a meal or cleaning a certain part of the kitchen. Maybe it's just the dishwasher and you're saying like how to get the dishes done or like specifically what you need to be done. Um, or in the bathroom, you want the mirror to be sprayed with a certain cleaner or you want to have it used with a cloth um, but you can put all those details on there you can also time yourself to show how long each activity will take and honestly the thought of that seemed very overwhelming to me because I'm like okay I have to go through each task and time myself and write it down make all these new note cards I mean, it would probably be great to do and then like have it all the way done, but I just, I really don't have the time to dedicate to an extra product project, unfortunately, at this time. So that's just not gonna work for me, but maybe for those of you watching out there, maybe that will just motivate you to have an overall cleaner house um, and just like have a system set up because they also tell you to categorize, like to get some sort of a file folder and to have different sections for each month. And sometimes um, some of these tasks could be daily tasks or multiple times a day tasks, like you're doing the dishes multiple times a day. 
Some of them can be weekly tasks or monthly tasks, or maybe they're seasonal or annual. So that's another way you can categorize these things and they do it by color. Oh, another thing I got to tell you guys about the book. It is kind of dated. It was originally written in 1977, but it says that the edition that I have was revised and updated 2001. So a lot of their references are like from the 70s, 80s, or 90s. So um, that's okay. I still think what they are saying in this book is very much relevant and you can kind of tweak it to what your needs are basically. But anyway, so back to what I was saying. Um, the book is called Sidetracked Home Executives. And so they abbreviate themselves as like she's, S-H-E, she's to, and it's, they're just kind of like joking. They throw humor throughout the book. So that's kind of, that kind of makes it a little more enjoyable to read. And I was wondering to myself how much of what they're saying in here is an actual exaggeration or if it's like 100% true, everything they're saying, especially since they're throwing in humor. But my understanding is that they had a very messy home or completely disorganized and could never like make it to things on time they over promised and under delivered. And so one of the things that they learned was that they had to start saying no to things. If somebody called them like a day or so before like the bake sale, oh, can you make 30 whatever for the bake sale? Like, oh, I'm sorry, Saturday is my baking day. If you would have called me by this time, I could have done it, but I can't do it. Because I think they were saying one of the problems they were having is that they were saying yes to everything because they were trying to people please or they were trying to appease everybody, but they had to realize what their limits were. And I've certainly heard that advice from other people in today's day and age, like it's okay to say no to things. And I've certainly learned that I have to do that too because I don't want my life to be so busy that I can't breathe. I want to be able to relax and be a good mom to my children without being constantly stressed out. So thankfully I've already implemented that into my life. Another great piece of advice they say is to always make sure like one of the first things you do in the day is to get dressed, um, even put your makeup on. And I've been doing that for many years actually. Um, I don't wear makeup every single day. However, when I do YouTube videos, I do put on makeup. So I look good on camera at least. And then um, I do wear makeup to nicer things. Like if I'm singing, performing for something, um, if I am singing at church, or if I'm going to church um, for special occasions, stuff like that. But I don't typically wear makeup every single day all the time just because I know that makeup can age your skin, even though I do use more natural based makeup or sometimes all natural type of things, it still ages your skin, even though you're using, and I don't use foundation anymore unless I absolutely need it. But um, yeah, I try to avoid using too much makeup and try to do a minimal amount of makeup. But I do agree with their principles about getting dressed. That's something I learned several years ago even before becoming a parent, because I think it was when I had my IT consulting job and on Fridays, I would be home. You would be able to work from home. And I would just get up, roll out of bed from my pajamas and start working. And then like eventually get dressed. But I started to learn after some time that I would be much more productive and I would just feel better about my entire day if I just got dressed first thing and just got ready and had everything set up right. And so, you know, I've pretty much done that all the time, like since being married and since having children even. Like, I wouldn't say I did it every single day, like from the early postpartum days, like the first month or two is pretty hard, 
but even then I would be like, I still want to get dressed because I'd feel much better about myself. Even like I wouldn't always have time for a shower, but it would be really nice to be able to, to do that, especially soon in the day. And I would just set up things much better. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you agree with that if, in your experience. So there's a story that they mention in there where they have a neighbor. Oh, by the way, the authors are sisters. I forgot to tell you guys that. So I guess it's like somewhat due to their upbringing that they ended up being the same, but it's just interesting how they both had their rock bottom moments around the same time and they just like completely turned things around. But anyway, so the story was they had this neighbor over and the neighbor was wanting tea. And by the way, this neighbor they mentioned was like perfect at homemaking and she always had everything together. Her home was immaculate. And so they were like looking to her for pieces of advice and she was asking for tea. And then she just starts saying or asking to them like, what, what's going on over there on the counter? And it turns out they had like these tea bags, used tea bags lined up on the counter. And she said, you just need one tea bag for one cup of tea, then you throw it out. And they were like looking at her in awe, like about her wisdom and her wonder. And it's, it's just kind of funny. That's one of the ways they throw humor in throughout the book, but it's just interesting that some of these things weren't that obvious to them. I also, I hit on this point before, but I will say based on my experience, and I think this will be the experience of other people like myself who are full-time homemakers, stay-at-home moms, and who are also homeschooling their children, or women with multiple children, um, big families, it may be very hard to implement this type of system. Or maybe it will be easier because you have older children who can help. So that was one of the purposes of the index cards is to time it on there and um, just write all these details so like anybody can come in and take it. So whether you hire like a housekeeper or you have somebody coming in to help you, that's the benefit of having those index cards with all those details on it so that person knows or even yourself knows like, oh, it takes me five minutes to vacuum the whole downstairs or whatever it is. Um, and you realize, okay, I have five minutes right now. So I can certainly see the benefit. I mean, maybe someday I will get to that, but that is just too overwhelming for me right now. Finally, I will tell you quickly about the rock bottom moment for one of the sisters. She had to have her husband's boss come over and pick something up. And that was the day that she happened to decide, okay, I've had enough of this mess. I'm gonna just clean the whole house. And she just like threw everything out and she lined up her kids and was like, we're gonna clean the house up today. The kids were four, three, and one. So I can't imagine lining up my two kids and expecting those kind of things from them. So that was just kind of comical to read. So then, she wasn't aware of the boss coming over and she was just stuck in this kid's tent um, when one of her kids opened the door for the boss and she was just hiding because she was so embarrassed of the, the mess. So anyway, fast forward a few months later, that, was, that day was her rock bottom moment. And a few months later, she had the boss come over again um, for whatever reason, and it was in the morning, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, and she had just baked a pie, the house was very clean, immaculate, and the boss was like so impressed. She later found out that the boss thought her husband had married another woman, and that's why the house was so different. <laughs> so it's just amazing the turnaround for everything. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about this, I can leave a link to the book as well, their website. Let me know what you think in the comments and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. May God bless you and your family.